Good morning. Welcome to this lecture. In fact, this is the beginning of a series of lectures and tutorials I'm going to do on machine learning. So first, let's uh, play tic-tac-toe. As you can see on the screen, uh, you can use this uh, to place each other for the game of tic-tac-toe. So each player can take turns uh, to, to play and then ultimately there can be a winner uh, from this. Now, you may say, why doing this? This is so simple, right? It's only a three by three grid uh, for this tic-tac-toe game. And what can we learn from, from this? Um, in fact, this is only our starting point. And the ultimate objective of this a series of lectures is to be able to ultimately create something like what you may have encountered on chess.com, right? On chess.com, you can play each other. You can also play one of those bots available on the website. And so ultimately, I would like to show you the steps uh, to create such a bot or a machine learning algorithm to learn and be able to play uh, such games as chess. But of course, chess is much more complex. And so with any project, it's always a good idea uh, to start with something simple. And then we can start, after we make it work, we can start to add more complexity, right? Uh, once we understand how it works, why it works, what works, what doesn't work, we can add more complexity to it and hopefully it can achieve, um, you know, another uh, milestone of success, right? So we are going to start with this very simple um, program of tic-tac-toe and then we will extend this um, and what we have done here uh, to other more advanced games such as checkers and then from checkers uh, for to to chess now in today's video what I'm going to focus on is to create this uh, simple game so that two players two human players can play uh, against each other right and then we're going to introduce a bot in uh, future videos uh, and in which case the bot will be able to uh, learn and perhaps we'll start with some basic rules or tactics uh, for the bot to learn to play and then from there we'll see perhaps there are situations where our tactics may not be able to really uh, help the bot to, to play effectively and, and successfully so there will be a case where the bot has to learn by playing okay and so we are going to introduce some machine learning uh, methods uh, for the bot to keep track of the situation on the game board and be able to project what uh, the next best move uh, should be right and so they will be able to um, learn from human players but also be able to learn um, and train on each other. And so hopefully we'll be able to see the evolution of that intelligence uh, from these bots. Okay, so this is kind of the long uh, story and, and kind of the ultimate uh, purpose of this uh, series of uh, videos. So today uh, our focus very, will be very simple. Uh, we are going to use a uh, Jupyter uh, notebook or lab, uh, Jupyter lab, lab to uh, create this this exercise. And so uh, I am going to assume that you already have this set up. Okay, it's just in case you don't have Jupyter, uh, you do need to install Ju Jupyter uh, on your on your machine, uh, whether it's a Windows or a a Mac. Okay, so just search for uh, Jupyter installation. You should be able to find instructions um, to do this installation. So I'm going to skip this 
and then go straight uh, to this exercise to create tic-tac-toe okay so now once you are in the notebook environment the first thing uh, they will do is just to create a notebook okay so just click uh, on creating a notebook and now we are in the notebook environment and what we can do uh, is to save this you can use uh, command s or control s and let's save this as tick tac toe okay so rename and here you go now to create a, a tic tac toe game um, first we need to visualize a tic tac toe game right as you can see uh, it's a three by three uh, matrix. It's a table of three rows and three columns. Okay, so let's uh, do some basic um, kind of construction of this um, tic-tac-toe uh, game board, but also uh, the rules uh, for this game. So first, we are going to create a class. Okay, and so it, it's a blueprint of uh, what we're going to do okay and we're going to call this class tic-tac-toe right so it's a class um, it's a blueprint for us to create the actual game now a couple of modules we, we, we are going to use here uh, because this uh, game needs to be interactive and so we're going to use some um, uh, widgets in Jupyter okay one is IPY widgets okay so I, we're going to import IPY widgets as widgets and then we are also going to import IPython okay dot display as display okay so the widgets and the display will give you the functionality uh, to create an interactive uh, visual interface uh, for this game okay so now when you import this and try to run this code later it may also say the modules are not found so in that case you do need to install them okay so I'm going to add a note here to say that I uh, install um, IPY widgets and IPython okay so if they are not found. Okay, so these are the modules you need to have. Okay, now uh, before I add in, uh, before adding the code, actually I would like to uh, just add a cell above and then change it to markdown and just provide some context. Okay, so this is really about tic tac toe. Okay the game and then so for the first day we are creating a simple game for two persons right so this is only our first try and then you can use ship enter or control enter to run the piece of code for markdown this is going to just show um, and render the text now we are in the code and we are creating this um, tic-tac-toe class okay, uh, to construct uh, the game okay, or the tic-tac-toe game. Okay, so now the first thing uh, in the class is a constructor function okay so it's kind of what you are going to do initially when this uh, game is created and this is uh, by default uh, init function okay and then self okay so this is the default construction function in python and so the first thing think about this in it's a three by three matrix and so we need to have a game board okay of three by three so first what we can do is self dot board which is going to be a board variable or memory location to contain 
uh, the matrix of three by three. Okay, so it's a three by three two dimensional matrix. And so to create a matrix or a, an array, you use this um, square bracket, right? So square bracket for um, one a list of things. Uh, but this is only one dimensional for now. To add another dimension, we can uh, put a line break here, okay? And then inside the two square brackets, uh, we can add another one, okay? For one row, okay? And then if there are three rows, we can do this, right? So three uh, sets of three pairs of uh, square brackets for three rows. And then inside each row, there are three columns, right? It's three by three. And for now, at the very beginning, everything is empty. And so we can put something like single quote space, single quote comma for each column. Okay, and then the second column again, quote space quote for the second column. And then for the third column, quote space quote. Okay, so this is the three columns for the first row. We're going to repeat that for the second row. And we also can repeat that for the third row. Okay, so visually, hopefully you can see that it's three by three, right? Three, three rows. Okay, and then inside each row, there are three columns. One, two, three, and they are empty. It's, there's just a space there. Okay, so for now, at, at the beginning, they are all empty. But when you start to play the game, you're going to put an X or O, right, on the tic-tac-toe uh, uh, game board. Okay, so what we are going to do next is also to decide, you know, who is going to be the play, whether it's X or O, right? Now, I do want to say that, you know, to create this, uh, there's an alternative way. Okay, so this visually speaking is easier to understand, but I also like to show you another way to do uh, this piece of code uh, using a loop. Okay, so uh, we can use self.board equal to, and okay, you know, this is to create an array, and then if you want to create a two dimensional array, there's another array inside, right, for the columns. And so what you do is that, okay, if you want to have three rows, okay, what you can do is that you can say, uh, given this is one row, you are going to repeat this to, for three times. And so you can say for row in range three, okay? So in range three is actually going to generate three numbers, zero, one, two the integers before are uh, less than three. Okay, so it's going to repeat itself for three times from zero, one, two. And so this is going to create, kind of repeat this for three times, three rows. And then inside each row, we can also do the same thing because we know we are going to have three uh, space. Okay, so um, we, we can have quote, space, quote, and then for column, you can say CLL or column in range also three. Okay, so we're going to repeat the column for three times in each row and then repeat the row for three times. So this is going to create a three by three uh, matrix on array. Okay, so I'm going to use this statement here, but I'm going to simply comment uh, the code out. Uh, just for your reference. Okay, so I'm going to use command or control slash Okay, to comment this piece of code out. Just remember this piece of code is to create the two um, two-dimensional three by three uh, matrix Okay, now we have the board kind of the memory of to keep track of what's going on, right? Uh, which one is which? Uh, now we are going to I'll start with uh, the player, right? So let's say at the beginning, the player, right, is X, right? You can play, uh, you can start with O, but 
but let's say we want to start with x so x is the first one to play and then o is the next right and so we can put self dot player equal to x so this is another variable to keep track of which player is playing currently now this ball keeps a, keeps an internal memory a variable of the situation but we also need kind of the visual components the buttons or the grid right so that people can can click okay so let's create the buttons and we're going to render or show the buttons at the end and so for now we are going to just create the buttons and again the buttons will align uh, with the with the board right so there are three rows and each row there are three buttons for each column and so what we are going to do is that we're going to follow this almost the same syntax as we did earlier here okay so um, so we can do um, something like for again row in range three uh, no uh, three is a function okay so remember this is uh, parentheses and inside the parentheses there's three because range is a function so this is going to repeat three rows for the button buttons and then we are going to sorry uh, we are going to repeat inside each row for three times for the columns okay again so but this time we are not going to create just the the empty space we are actually going to create uh, buttons from the widgets okay so that we can show them and so what we do here is we're going to use widgets and capital B U T T O N to create a button for now the description is empty okay so just empty description okay because there's nothing uh, in there yet okay so now empty description so but this is only one for one button right so if you need three buttons what you do is for column in range three um, whether you use col or whatever it doesn't matter you can also say for button in range three it's going to repeat it for three times to create three button as widgets okay so this is to create the buttons now the next one uh, we are going to uh, kind of connect the output of this tic-tac-toe game to the output of the widgets okay so widgets doc capital output okay so this will connect the two together okay so this is kind of the initialization and now we are going to create another function inside this class okay so there should still be indentation because it's a function or method within the tic-tac-toe class so the second function we're going to create is simply to display what's on the game board okay and so display self and so the first thing we are going to is that we have all the buttons now we are going to create a grid uh, based on the buttons okay so uh, follow me on the syntax uh, this um, is kind of a special syntax to get it into the right format for the widgets okay so uh, just follow me here uh, so so we're going to create a grid okay based on the grid box from the widgets uh, library okay and put a pair of parentheses and then inside the parentheses we need to for there are two parameters okay so one the first pyramid before the comma is we need to give it a list of buttons to be rendered on the grid Okay, so um, what we can do is that we can create a list again a list so what it accepts is just a simple list of buttons okay uh, from the buttons that we have already created okay so what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to use a button okay and 
this button will come from all the rows and columns in this buttons okay uh, array okay and so we're going to do button for row in self buttons for button in row okay so this is basically going through all the rows in the buttons and then for each row we're going through each button in each row okay so hopefully this makes sense this will retrieve or get all the buttons from the uh, three by three uh, button array okay so this is the first uh, parameter and the second parameter for this grid box is actually a parameter about the layout okay so again imagine uh, again the layout in this case is the three by three grid okay so we are going to use this widget dot layout template okay let's set up parentheses okay and then there is a template that we are going to use okay so um, columns equal to repeat three and I'm going to explain what it means okay so okay so for the second parameter here so first parameter is the list of buttons to be rendered on the grid and then the second parameter here is simply to tell it how to render them in which format and this is going to say that we are going to repeat you know three times three okay uh, for for this uh, three times three um, tic-tac-toe game board and then each column here is going to be 150 pixels wide so 150 px okay so that is the display and then in the end we are going to say that we, because we already import this display function so we are going to call this function and say grid which is the grid uh, that we already create have created there and then output this to the self the output okay uh, which is the widgets output okay so this will connect them together and then be able to show the game board okay so for now that that's give it a, a try okay so first we are going to create the actual game from this tic-tac-toe class okay so what we do is just to call tic-tac-toe okay so this is going to create a game out of this class which is the blueprint okay and then and so when this is called this INIT will automatically be executed okay so this the board, the player, the buttons will be created, including the output. And then what we're going to do is to going to call game.display. Okay. And so this game.display is a call to this function, display function as part of the tic-tac-toe class. Because again, game is based on the blueprint of the tic-tac-toe. So display is part of the blueprint here that we already defined here. Okay, so this is hopefully going to run and show you the game board. So let's run it. Uh, there is some issue here. Okay, so um, let's see. So from, this is actually not as by import, my mistake. Okay, so from IPython display, import display. Um, so what we are going to do here is to going to rerun. Okay. And so the fix the issue. Now, uh, just one one tip here. Whenever you see there's a problem here, uh, don't panic. Okay, always go to uh, where the line the where the line is with the problem. Right, it says line three. Right, this is line three, and um, and then it says whatever issue there is. Okay, and so initially it was as and we should change it to import and rerun it okay so uh, there is also when your code gets along there is also a way to show the the 
line numbers okay if you prefer to have that that will also help you keep track of which line is which okay so you can go to view and show line numbers there okay so this shows a three by three uh, matrix or table right three rows and three columns each column is a button right now if you click nothing happens because this is yet to have behaviors uh, that can respond to your mouse click event okay so we need to create some code so that when you click okay at least first time you when you click it should put an X on an empty cell right so let's do it so the next um, uh, move that we are going to do is to create a function okay uh, called make move okay so there is going to be a function and then as part of this function, right, make move, it should also tell us like which one you want to move to. In on tic-tac-toe, you only need to tell the position, right, where you want to put X or O on it. Right? So uh, there should be it should be related to the row or column. Okay. So um, on this game board, let me illustrate, um, make sure that we are on the same page here. Okay, so with this three row and let's see. So here, um, the, there's a row index. Okay, so there are three rows and in Python, the row index is always start was always start with zero. Okay, so zero, one, and two. Okay, zero being the first row, one being the second, two being the third. Okay, and so sometimes we can say this is i. Okay, use i for the row index, and then for the columns it's the same thing. So there is. We can say, okay, let's use J uh, for the column index. And J can be start from zero for the first column, one for the second column, and then two for the third column. Okay, so this is going to be the I for the row index and J for the column index. And we are going to create a loop. Uh, for that purpose okay so now in order to make move um, we need to let's say instead of row and column let's use i and j because i just talked about it okay so this is going to let me make a call uh, com comment okay so this is going to kind of put either x or o right on the i's row and j's column okay once you have the row and j uh, and the column index you know which um, cell right uh, will be be marked so so with that uh, we can create this uh, function here Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to say that um, now the when you try to make this move, you can only do that move if the the cell is not occupied, right? If the cell is empty, right, and there is only a space uh, there, you can put either X on or O on it. But if it's already occupied, you cannot do it. Okay, so we need a check uh, just to make sure that on the board, okay, for the I and J, okay, so the board I's row and then J's column, double quote, if it's single quote space quote, okay, so Again, we use this as a placeholder, right? When there's no X or and no, no, no O. 
Okay, so it's an empty, and so if it's empty, then you can play. If it's not empty, you will do nothing. Okay, so we are going to only allow this move when it's empty. And what we are going to do is that for this particular cell, if it's not occupied, we are going to put something on it. And let them, something depends on which one is playing. Okay, so this cell, the player keeps track of whose turn is this, whether it's X or O. And so we're going to just take it from here. Okay, so whoever is playing self dot player, okay, which can be either X or O, will be assigned uh, to this particular cell on the game board or this button on the game board. Okay, and the also uh, the button description will also be changed because the board keeps track of the memory of the situation, but the button will also show that x and o on the display so we also need to update the buttons okay so cell the buttons and again use i for the raw and j uh, for the um the column index and then the button button dot description equal to self dot player okay and so right now you have assigned that x or O to the button and you think maybe this is done but not yet there's one more step because once one player has played it should switch to the other player right so if let's say if currently the self dot player is let's say if it's O O is X okay at the beginning it's always X now we should switch it to O, right? So if it's X, then let's switch it to capital O, okay? Else, if otherwise, that means currently is it, it is O, then we switch, we should switch it back to X. So hopefully it makes sense. So it's going to uh, create the turns. So this is kind of the turn taking. Okay, so this code is for turn taking. Just switch between the two players X and O. Right, so this is the code. Now, with this piece of code, this code will be not executed because if you run this piece of code, uh, there's one thing we need to. Uh, oh, okay. This should be double equal sign if, okay, because single equal sign is to assign to assign a new value to the variable. Double equal sign to, is to evaluate whether this condition is true, whether the two are equal or not. Okay, so let's again rerun this code, and if you click, still nothing happens, right? Because again. Um, even though we have this code, this code has nothing to do with the mouse click. So we need to assign this code to mouse click event so that whenever the user clicks on uh, a button, it's going to respond and execute this piece of code. So this will be the last piece of code for today. Okay, so right now we are going to uh, register the make move function to each button on click event okay so we're going to register to each buttons on click event so that when you click on the button it's going to make a move so what we do here is that we are going to go through all the rows and columns Again, I for the raw index, so I in range 3, and then for J in range 3, okay, because it's 3 by 3 uh, matrix. And again, there's indentation here, okay, so there is a bigger loop to go through all the rows, and then inside each row, there's a nested loop, okay, here to go through each column. 
And so what we do inside the nested loop is to register each button. Okay, and so I and J. Okay. So this reference a particular button at I's row and J's column. And then we're going to say on underscore click self dot make move I J. Okay, so this is going to register the on click, okay, which is to say that for each button, whenever the user clicks on the button, I'm going to run this code called make move. And again, the IJ will be passed to the actual IJ. So if your uh, you click on the second column and second row, okay, this i and j will be one one because zero being the first index, so one one is the second row, second column will be passed uh, to this make move function to mark the x or o on that specific position. So let's give it a test. We run it. Okay. Uh, we have a little roadblock here, uh, but there's a problem that we need to fix uh, in order to move forward. So in this piece of code, even though theoretically it looks fine, uh, we I did not do it in the Python way. So that, let's fix it. Uh, this fix this piece of code here. Okay. So what I would like to do is inside this make move function, let's define another function uh, called on button clicked and then with this underscore parameter okay which is the event information uh, from the on click event okay even though we don't really need the uh, event information here okay and uh, what I'm going to do is to select this portion of the code and make it as part of this on clicked on button clicked function okay so this code will be executed by uh, this function that takes information from the on click event okay and then parallel to this function I'm going to return on button clicked okay so that is just uh, uh, on button click actually uh, this is going to actually return the result of the definition because the problem uh, that we encountered earlier is that when we register the function execution uh, at, to the on click event uh, it will always be always be triggered okay and that explains why the all the buttons uh, have been marked by either x or or o okay and so now when we return and this is very important do not put parentheses here okay just put on button click okay and so this is simply to assign this um, function as a listener to the event but not execute the event itself so this is just a minor uh, minor issue and so with this i think our problem should be fixed and so when we rerun this piece of code um you know everything is empty for now and you can start to play and we know the first player is the x so when you click it will assign an x and then it will be switched to o and the next player can play here it will be o and so you can continue to play right and something like this okay so this is our first step in creating uh, the tic-tac-toe okay so a starting point and then in future videos we're going to add features uh, to this game so hopefully we can play against a bot and create a bot that can learn from by playing with human people okay so we'll see you in the next one bye for now